Our cameras can shoot lots of frames really, really quickly. How many of those are actually really good? I'm talking about keepers on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey there, everybody, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions right here on Adorama TV. If you've got a photo question, you know what to do. Just go to askdavidbergman.com and submit that form on the site. I just might pick your question and answer right here on a future show. Today's question was sent in by Brian Yu, and he wants to know, I shoot high school sports and have my Canon R3 cameras set up almost exactly like yours. What is a normal number of keepers after, say, a 750 shot effort? For me, it's somewhere around 70 images where I've captured face, number, and action. I don't know whether this is good or bad. How many do you keep in a typical shoot? It's a great question, Brian. I've done plenty of videos on this channel about technical stuff like gear, camera settings, and lighting, but not a lot of photographers talk about topics like this one, or they just don't wanna let you see behind the curtain. Well, I'm an open book for the most part, so let's talk about it. Now, what does Brian mean by keepers? Well, for me, I think that everything up to and including pushing the shutter button, that's really only part of the creative process. Maybe it's 75% of it, but that last 25% is incredibly important. And that starts with picking the best images. Think of the image capture process like the first draft of your photography, and then you need to cull down that raw data into something that's gonna make a great photograph. And my friend Brian Friedman always says, it's half what you shoot and half what you show. And he's absolutely right. People are only gonna know your work by what you put out there in the world. So showing only your best stuff is gonna go a long way towards helping your image as an excellent photographer. Showing too much just dilutes your best work down. Now our cameras today can shoot a lot of frames really quickly. The Canon R3 is my primary camera for concerts, sports, or fast action of any kind. And I have two of them that I wear on my shoulders when I'm working as a touring concert photographer. One of them, I'm gonna have a wide zoom like the 2470 or the 24 to 105, and the other one's gonna have a longer telephoto like the 70 to 200 or the 100 to 500. And the R3 can shoot up to 12 frames per second with the mechanical shutter and a whopping 30 frames per second using the electronic shutter. I hate to sound like an old man, but I remember when three frames a second was a lot. Get off my lawn, you damn kids. Uh, now, I rarely shoot at 30 frames per second, mostly because I use the mechanical shutter almost all the time. I don't shoot, shoot too much sports action anymore, but I definitely could see the value in 30 frame per second bursts to get the ultimate peak action shots. There's a difference between a picture where the photo, where the football, for example, is right on the receiver's fingertips as opposed to them already having it in their hands. 30 frames per second is gonna give you a better chance of getting that perfect fingertip shot. Now I shoot concerts like I used to shoot sports, so I'm still gonna be up around 12 frames per second for multiple hours of an entire show. With two bodies and often a third remote camera that's placed on stage, that translates into a lot of images. It's not uncommon for me to have three to 5,000 frames per show, and I shoot multiple shows per week. That's gonna add up over time. And when it comes to culling those images down to just the best ones, I do use a fantastic program called Photo Mechanic. I did an Ask David Bergman video years ago about how I use the program, and I'll put a link to that down below so you can watch it. But the short version is that I'll do multiple passes where I quickly look through every single frame and copy the best images into a new folder. Then I redo the process over and over with those new smaller batches of images and copy the best ones into yet another folder. And I'm gonna keep doing that as many times as I have to until I get down to my final best images. The thing is, this process can be really tough. Photographers are notoriously bad at culling through our own photos, right? Right? <laughs> Am I speaking to some of you out there? I know it was really hard for me for a very long time. You really have to learn to separate how hard it was to make the image from whether it's actually a good photograph. Just because you worked really hard to get it doesn't mean that it's actually any good. So you have to try to look at it from the outside and forget that you actually took the picture and how what you did to make that photo. So now let's talk about real numbers. For my concert shoots, let's say I start with 4,000 images. That's not uncommon, between three and 5,000 frames. For my first pass, I'm not gonna be too tough just yet. I'm only looking for pictures that are decent or better. If I think I might wanna look at them again to possibly 
make them into my, get them into my final round, I'm going to move them into after into that first round into my second pass, right? So that first pass very quickly, not thinking too much, just just anything I want to see again, I'm going to push to the next round. From 4,000, I might have, let's say, 800 at that point. That's not uncommon. Of course, this is an average and it's going to change every day, but that's seven or 800 is roughly what I'm going to get. Then I'm going to go through only those images, that 800 frames, to try and get down to only the best of the best. I'm going to be way more selective here. You have to be brutal at this stage. If you've got, let's say, a series of images that are similar, you probably only need one of those. Maybe you shot something that's really unique, but if it's just not a good picture, get rid of it. Or you might have a sequence of images that are all pretty good, but you just need to find that one best frame. For example, I shot 30 frames of Luke Combs kicking a cup across the stage during a show in a big burst. Four or five of those probably made it past my first round, but when I go through them carefully on my last pass, I'm gonna pick the one best frame and no one's ever gonna see the rest of them, except you guys who are watching this video. So from those 800 concert photos, I'll usually get it down to between 50 and 80 best of the best. Make sure that you'd be okay with any one of those images being published by itself. That's usually a good barometer on whether an image is gonna make it into my final keepers. If I wouldn't be happy for somebody to post just that one picture, then I'm not gonna send it. Okay, so because I'm doing all of this culling in Photo Mechanic, then and only then do I bring those final 50 to 80 images into my raw converter for editing. I use Capture One, but you might use Lightroom or some other similar program like that. Doesn't really matter. But that number of images is way more manageable to work with. And more importantly, I know they're all very good images. Anything that's made it into my Capture One photo library has already been called and I know it's a good picture. Even once I'm working in Capture One, I might find a few frames that are either too similar to each other or they don't work after I've toned them up or they simply don't add to the story I'm trying to tell. I'm gonna get rid of those. If I've got 30 to 50 fantastic images to deliver to my client, then I'm happy. That, of course, started, remember, with 4,000 frames, and now I'm down to 30 or 50. Now, of course, these numbers are not absolute. Some of it is gonna depend on your client, your style, and, of course, what your client expects, whether you're, it's a hobby and you're just doing this for fun or you're actually doing this as a paid job. When I worked at a newspaper, for example, many years ago, they only needed four or five images transmitted on deadline from a live event. Realistically, they were only gonna publish one or two in the paper, so they already had options with more than they needed. And of course, the genre of photography you're working in also makes a huge difference in the ratio of keepers to the number of frames shot. Sports and concert photographers tend to shoot thousands of images using big bursts and might deliver 30. Corporate event and wedding photographers might sh only shoot one or 2,000 frames and deliver 400, for example. And if you're doing portraits, maybe you push the shutter only 100 times and you deliver five or 10 final images. Of course, everyone has their own style, so those numbers, like I said, are not absolute. So Brian, for your high school sports assignment, I would say that getting 70 keepers from 750 shot images sounds right on point to me. As long as those are all quality images and your clients are happy, then I'd say you're good to go. What do you all think? How many images do you shoot and how many keepers do you get from that? Let me know down in the comments below. Make sure to include what type of photography you do and whether it's for a paid job or a fun hobby for yourself. Also, if you're drowning in files and wanna see how I get through thousands of frames quickly, check out that photo mechanic video I linked in the description. Remember, you can send in your own photo questions to askdavidbergman.com. If you like these videos, I do appreciate you hitting that like button and of course, subscribing to the Adorama YouTube channel. Click that bell icon so you'll be notified when new shows come out for myself and all the other photo hosts for free right here on Adorama TV. Thanks so much for joining me and I hope you come back next time right here on Ask David Bergman.